Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming uh, to this um, now just about annual exercise in the practice of the civic faith. Um, the particular form, as you know by now, that I prefer this take is a more uh, congregational form than uh, uh, a formal debate. It seems to me uh, somewhat more analogous to the situation that uh, board members actually face uh, rather than winning a debate trophy, um, which can go with the other ones there. Um, and it gives you all and the people who will primarily see this um, in the form of a video a better a way to get a sense of uh, who they uh, would like to represent them because that's what you'll be doing, uh, being in place of them. Um, so, and that involves also interacting with others and with the public as well as simply showing us uh, how ready you are to serve. So, with that, uh, let me get out of the way and uh, uh, be lazy and uh, ask people to, each candidate, to uh, make a brief introductory statement. Then I'll ask a question or two for them to bat around, and then we'll go to you. So, uh, if you all have questions, please get them ready. Um, why don't we just start on my left and go that way, and then we'll work our way back in the closing, or we'll work our way probably the same order, to be fair, or something like that in the, in the closing. Okay, Lee? Thank Welcome. you very much. Thank you, Gordon. Uh, thank you for inviting me tonight. Uh, my name is Lee Erickson, for those of you that don't know me. Um, I started about four years ago uh, to get myself involved in local government uh, when the town was uh, in the process of rezoning and, uh, so that I could uh, get active in that. Property was going to be uh, rezoned, and uh, I embedded myself in that process uh, in order to get my uh, property rights. But anyway, um, through that process, I learned a lot about government, uh, how local government works, uh, how county government works, the relationship between town, town, village, and, and the county. And uh, over the past four or five years, I've stayed involved in that process. I ran for supervisor two years ago. What I learned in that process was that I did enjoy getting out to meet people. I enjoyed listening to people, uh, listening to their perspective on things, and uh, I wanted to stay involved in that. I think I can make a difference with an independent voice uh, if I'm elected to this board, um, and I hope to do that this fall. Thank you. Okay. Hi, I'm Mike Leonard. Um, I think a number of people have seen me on TV. I'm the chairman of the planning board. Uh, that's a group that meets every month to discuss issues that come before it, which deal uh, on a large scale with site plans, anywhere from residential to commercial. And we make evaluations based on information supplied to us. Um, I've also on the conservation board, have been, uh, been on planning since 2010. I'm on the conservation board still. I've been on that since 2009. That obviously gets involved um, directly with the environment, so that uh, in the regards to the planning board, you take a look at the site plan, and then the conservation board takes an actual look, uh, more in-depth look at the environmental issues. And then I've been on the board of assessment to, to, since 2008. And on that, that's where if you look at your taxes and you feel that there may be an issue uh, as far as assessment goes, you would go before the board of assessment every May. And, and, and obviously, um, you would do an assessment on your property, have performed that, and if you feel based on an appraisal, you would you bring your information in, and of course we would assist you. Um, we were board of uh, assessment was instrumental also in a uh, seven percent school tax reduction in Lakeland, which we're pretty proud of. Um, I feel that experience that I just explained to you um, gives me a great foundation towards uh, what I believe would be um, something I could do very very much for the town, and that is actually going on the town board. Um, it gives me a great foundation. I feel. The chairman, uh, the planning board, uh, not uh, obviously centers in on the overall site plan issues. And I think uh, in concert with the town board, which I've worked with for years, um, they're able to obviously uh, interject, involve, and on a larger scale. And I feel that I could really do a lot of good there. And um, I believe uh, that I could be very beneficial uh, with the experiences I've had also over 30 years on dealing with a lot of similar things that the town board does um, in regards to anywhere from the budgets being able to 
look at those issues and be able to decide which issues we should keep or not as far as line by line goes, I have to do that as well. Dealing with contracts, dealing with personnel. I've been a supervisor, supervised over 100 people at one time. So I have a lot of experience with managerial experience as also in schooling uh, for my college degree, also uh, business leadership. Um, so I, I feel I have a lot of background, a lot of experience, and a lot of experience with this town uh, that I feel that I could really do a good job for you. Thank you, and thank you for, very much for inviting me. Thanks, Mike. John? Thank you, Gordon. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Gordon and Pete Gopestown.info for hosting us. Yeah. Now, that is yeah. the greatest <laughs> There we go. Does anybody here read Freud in German? Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to. And I'd like to thank you all for coming out this evening and spending your evening with us. And I appreciate both of you putting your names into this uh, race because it's not an easy place to go. Um, I'd like to start off by saying my track record of service to the town of Phillipstown uh, and my community speaks for itself. I have served Phillipstown in several capacities all of my adult life. I've gained a great working knowledge of our town and its residents by being here. I'm a homeowner here. I'm a taxpayer. Um, I'm a small business owner. I try to make my living here in Phillipstown. I'm a father of two very active young boys. Uh, I'm a son of a uh, senior citizen, so I see my mother's challenges with keeping her home and uh, keeping her independence. Uh, I'm a coach. I'm a volunteer firefighter uh, and a town councilman. And on, a t on even on occasion, I am a husband as well. Uh, it's rare. All these roles expose me to a wide variety of, of people, uh, opinions, and viewpoints. I use, these wide, I use these wide, this wide base to assist me in making decisions that I face. I'm also not afraid to make the unpopular statement or vote, and I've been honored to serve as your town councilman since 2010. And with your support on November 5th, I will continue to protect the natural beauty of Phillipstown while maintaining its affordability and continue to improve the town's preparedness. Well, I don't know about you, but in a way, I, I think I, these are very good opening statements. I think I got a sense of what has motivated you to run, and so I, I won't um, ask off the top my favorite question, which those of you who've been here before know is the famous Roger Mudd question when Teddy Kennedy uh, decided to run against Jimmy Carter. Uh, uh, there was a great deal of anticipation, and his first interview was Roger Mudd went up to Mark, uh, to uh, Hyannis, and uh, asked him this impossibly trick question, Senator, why are you running for president? And this was followed by a long, embarrassing, interminable, uh, well, uh, Roger, you see, uh, uh, and he couldn't answer the most basic question, why am I running for office? It was pretty much over then. Uh, but you guys did a very good job of giving us a sense of that, so no uh, point in repeating it. I'll go uh, directly to a substantive question, and um, then we'll see what happens from there. There is um, now this thing called a cap. Um, uh, my uh, great, terrific editorial group has told me what it is, um, but I'm going to assume you know what it is, and we'll be able to speak to uh, how you would go about uh, meeting uh, the um, restrictions of this and provide us with um, uh, services um, and good government. So why don't I start in the middle this time, Mike? And you. Okay. Uh, you're referring to the 2% uh, budget cap that uh, Governor Cuomo is referring to? Yes. Yeah. I, All right. I think it has a – doesn't it have a more precise number? Well, it, there's two, it, it's 2 percent, but basically it's 2 percent um, not counting in mandatory benefits and union contracts and salary increases. Um, so sometimes there's a, a little bit of confusion that way. It's actually 2 percent above those costs. Um, which is very challenging and daunting for the town to deal with because I think you realize also um, another area that is clearly not uh, looked at a lot of times is the unfunded state mandates that come in. Uh, stormwater management was an issue that this town had to deal with without any funding, but a lot of regulations from the state, which meant uh, bringing in uh, personnel to assist. The town spent a number of hours having to work with that. I think we realized with a town with over 50% steep slopes, Stormwater management is critical to us. So that's an area of concern. That's an area that clearly challenges that 2% uh, cap. Um, you have to then take a look at your budget. You have to look line by line. You have to know it. You have to be, when you're sitting there and you're actually signing invoices, you have to be asking the questions. In fact, am I, if, 
can this area be cut? Can, is, it, is it necessary? Because down the road, when I get towards the lower part of the, lower part of the list, I'm going to have to make sure that we're trying to hold to that 2% cap. So it is a very important um, milestone to hold on to, but it's, it gets tougher each year and it makes it that much harder on you. You have to try to take a look for other resources as well beyond the town uh, actual uh, tax dollars, such as state and federal, to be able to assist you in programs where we want to obviously increase and to be able to uh, grow our town. Okay. John? Um, I've had the luxury of working with Supervisor Shea for the past four years, um, and I've seen him, uh, the, the challenges we have facing the 2% cap. Uh, we've managed to, to keep the budget under the 2% cap uh, with a lot of struggling. There's been uh, you know, some controversy, especially for me with the emergency services. I've tried to encourage people um, that it's a time of needs and not wants, and it's not always an easy, it's not always an easy sell. Um, we also were faced, not only with the 2% cap, with the deficit with the uh, mortgage rebate tax. The town was accustomed to seeing a huge uh, mortgage rebate tax, and my first year on the board, I think it was about a third of what was uh, anticipated. So it was a big challenge to make that difference up. But I've watched Supervisor Shea um, do that, and he's done it every year. Uh, the, the budget process is very uncomfortable for somebody who lives in the town and uh, knows a lot of the people that we're facing. I mean, you sit there and it's not an easy thing to say some, to somebody, you're not getting a raise this year, and, and this is why. So um, it's been a challenge, but I think we've worked together. The town has listened. The board has listened. Um, and I've encouraged, encouraged people that, you know, go for want, for needs, not wants. So, thank you. Okay. Uh, I do believe the town board and Supervisor Shea, you've done a great job with the budget, keeping with it the cap over the past few years since that was imposed. Um, it's a difficult <coughs> task, as both of these candidates have, have uh, said that, keep within that cap, especially the rising pension costs, health care costs. 70% uh, of the county budget is based on mandate from the state. Uh, if we don't get mandate relief uh, eventually, I don't know how we can maintain a 2% uh, cap without, without growth somewhere here, without revenues from the mortgage uh, rebate, without some smart growth here uh, on the limited business properties we have left in town. Um, if we can find ways to create more revenue, Keep our budgets intact. Uh, we can do it, but it, it'll be tough going forward. Well, with that, if you don't mind, I think it's kind of a kind of begs a sort of follow-up uh, conversation because this probably is the single most uh, broad uh, definition of the challenge you all face: is balancing the needs and the, and the resources. Um, so far, you all have been able to do this, and thank you, for, and you've been uh, generous with uh, the supervisor on this, but. Uh, Let's say, do you think we can continue to muddle through kind of year by year looking at every line item like this, or are there uh, things we're going to have to do on the expense and revenue side to somehow uh, get into another level? I, Why don't you go first? I, I think we have to do more with less somehow, and uh, everybody talks about consolidation of services, uh, whether it be the courts, uh, the village, and the town merging at some point. I know that's a, an ugly subject sometimes with the village, but uh, you know there's, there's certain things that we might have to consolidate, whether it's fire departments and equipment and, uh, and manpower highway department with the village highway department. Um, but there's things we've really got to take a hard look at to, to cut numbers down in order to keep going forward like this. Mike? Uh, Lee's got a good point. The consolidation issue, obviously, uh, which is in the planning comprehensive plan, is an issue that the town board did look into. Uh, Nancy Montgomery actually uh, took a look into uh, the issue, and uh, it's, it isn't an easy issue. Obviously, it's difficult. Um, having act as fire departments, we have the villages, which obviously um, have their own uh, setups, and you know, also with the county. Um, I think there's been some progress made in those areas towards that particular point. Um, in regards to um, going forward, um, if you actually, it's, it's kind of interesting from a historical standpoint, if you look at the comprehensive plan when it was written in 2006, the town was actually in a position where the funding was actually in better shape. And you can actually get that from the wording in it. Um, whereas now, obviously, situations changed. And I think it teaches you that you can't just rely on mortgage tax um, because obviously it's going to go up and down. Uh, you need other stable resources. And then when you have that in good times, Obviously, that can help you towards other funding and very important to have to maintain a rainy day fund. 
know, so because obviously, you know, you know you're going to have those peaks and valleys, and you want to be able to maintain that. But it is a challenge going forward. However, obviously, that's why you have to keep asking yourself line by line, where do you need to, in fact, uh, can you cut? And obviously, you need to maintain essential services. We don't really want to cut certain services here. So it is a, t a tough situation. Obviously, the budget valuations will be occurring soon, and they're quite intense and in-depth. Um, and that's why you need a good, uh, dedicated board to be able to look at those issues for you. Um, with the projections, the more conservative projections on a mortgage rebate tax, I think um, it's gone a long way. And now we have seen a slight uptick in the, uh, in the rebate tax. So that is helping us. Uh, the 2% cap is very difficult. And there may not be uh, a good end to this. I mean, there could be a, a time where we have to say, look, we need to do this, or we're going to cut services to the town. Both of these guys mentioned consolidation. Uh, we, we've been through the consolidation thought uh, with the emergency services, and I, I think there is some uh, definite benefit of them both purchasing, and, and I think there is a lot more cooperation um, lately with working towards uh, that type of, uh, of solution. Um, I have a great working relationship with Mayor Falloon uh, in the village of Cold Spring, and I would love to approach a, uh, a consolidation of the highway service as well as I know there's some interest in, in using our building department um, as well as courts. Unfortunately, I think we'd be great for the town of Phillipstown to host um, a town-wide court, but our facility obviously can't do it. So that solution may be uh, in our near future. Maybe we will be able to consolidate courts and save money there. But uh, I don't think any of us have a venue that's big enough or um, that could accommodate that. But uh, those are all great possibilities for money savings. And uh, like I said, I have a, a good relationship with Mayor Flynn and I hope to work with him on uh, would uh, but, uh, a Butterfield development conceivably house this uh, consolidation? Would it facilitate, so to speak, consolidation in your view? It certainly could. Or, or a development at the American Legion Hall. Either, either, either way could work for us. Yeah, those are clear options, uh, without a doubt. Um, something that the town board has been looking at, too, and I think uh, people have seen that if they attended the board meetings or watched on TV or read it, is they're obviously evaluating all town properties, the FW and so forth, to be able to take a look at what we have and what, in fact, uh, can we utilize the best. And then, um, obviously, uh, if we're not utilizing something, uh, possibly consider selling it. Um, that's a possibility. It's not. So the idea is to take a look at that. So, you know, you want to look at all areas to be able to, to see uh, what you can uh, obviously deal with before you, you have to take a look at uh, issues as such as raising taxes. I agree with most of these Okay, but then let me follow up on something that, that you um, uh, put out a little bit more than the other two did, which is the revenue side. Um, you mentioned development as a way to um, you know, maybe uh, alleviate some of the stresses of the cap. Uh, do you have any, can you elaborate on that? There a are bit? some um, still vacant business properties up here on Route 9. I mean, we have Cybertron, uh, that building up there. Post Road Hardware Texas Barbecue has been vacant for a long time. Um, there are others, there's a few other business properties in town that if we can maybe work with the economic development uh, in Putnam County and try to really get some targeted businesses here that work for us. Nothing that's smokestacks and chimneys, but maybe some, you know, computer businesses or, or something up here that would work. But we really should look into that, I believe. And if we can get some revenue from that, it'll help offset this 2% cap uh, the way of getting us through this. Right, you on that? Um, actually, uh, Cybercrom is uh, going to be going before the planning board shortly for um, some evaluation for um, their business. They have already as far as subdivision, and obviously um, that's one business, and Lee's right on that. Um, the other thing also is, there, it, as far as going through the planning board and so forth, since I've been on it, we have had some decent commercial uh, development um, in, our, in our town, and it's very encouraging. Um, I think uh, businesses that have come before us have realized that we've been open, we've discussed issues, we work with them well, um, we, we have tried since the new zoning to be able to go forward with being able to show that when people come before us, well, we want to follow the process, and we do, and we follow the state environmental codes and so forth, but we try as, as much as we can to move the process along so that businesses are encouraged to come here. If we just delay, delay, the businesses will go somewhere else. So it's a combination of both, being able to ensure that we follow the regulations, but also be able to work with 
businesses to encourage them to come more into this town. Well, I have a good working relationship with a number of the uh, business owners in the town, and I rely on their opinion uh, heavily with a lot of the decisions I make. The vacant buildings in town are currently paying taxes, so, so that we are getting their revenue, but at least as far as I know they are. Um, there, there is obviously benefits to filling the mill. They'll support um, you know, other businesses throughout the town and, and generate some more income. But that's an interesting point, is if we could get a small portion of the sales tax that goes to Putnam County from Phillipstown, it would go a long way to uh, help us subsidize our budget here in Phillipstown. So that would be a great project for us all to work on. Uh, then uh, just one more on the budget, because that's the budget, as you all know, is the place where it all happens, uh, where reality is, where uh, fantasies are. Let me just uh, pose a hypothetical uh, in front of it. If a crunch came, your next term, and you had to do something uh, unexpected to meet the cap, what would you do in terms of things you would reduce, cut, eliminate? Anybody want to go first? Sure. Uh, well, my first year on the town board, uh, Supervisor Shea proposed a 10% cut to every department throughout the town, and we got it. Uh, so I think there is, um, I should say he got it. I think there is areas uh, <laughs> yeah. we cut we cut even deeper in, in some areas. But there's always a way to, to, to pinch some pennies here and there. Um, it's it's a daunting a daunting thing for us because we don't want to cut services. We have uh, a wonderful town here. Uh, and a lot of these services, you know, everybody likes to criticize recreation. You know, we do too much. A lot of these services bring a lot of people into this town. I had a young couple moving across the street from me, and I asked them, you know, why, why did you come here? Well, he said, I, I stopped at the school, I checked the school, and I checked out your recreation facilities. And that made my decision. It's a beautiful place besides these. So, you know, it's, it's very hard. I mean, who, do you, who do you face? Who do you tell? But we've been doing it. Uh, we've been cutting um, year after year. And it, it's getting to the point now where it's, uh, it's going to be services soon if we don't. But that's why I asked the question. Right. Let's say this point comes up next year. Well, I'm sure we could we could squeeze everybody for a small percentage. So your All your your preference would be just just so we get clear on folks would be to go for in a, in a more across the board Absolutely. direction than and a specific target elimination. Okay. I don't think we have any luxuries at this point. I think we're uh, no low hanging as right. they say. There's nothing low hanging. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, Share the pain approach. Or if the taxpayers get or, upset enough about it, a, they'll it would talk. Be a vote, I believe, to go up above the uh, cap uh, if necessary, but look, you know, look to work within it. Mike? Yeah, you would have to uh, yeah, justify it. But the um, I, I agree with both uh, Lee and, and John uh, in regards to, and I think I've tried to convey that to you, that clearly I really think. Um, you don't want to have a, a, in your head to be saying, okay, if I have an issue, what am I going to cut as far as, as a service and so forth? That's really the latter stages. You really, as John said, you clearly want to take a look at your uh, current operation, see what you could partially reduce. As I mentioned earlier, you can take a look at town assets. You can and should always take a look at state and federal uh, monies capability. I realize that's not as much, but it is still out there, and if you aggressively pursue it, uh, you are able to, to get those monies. And also make sure that you're saving in the good or better times when we get a little more of the mortgage tax money, like John said, is going up a little, to save for that rainy day so that you're not sitting there when all of a sudden, and you know something will come up, you want to have the ability to have that funding there so that you don't have to take a look at essential services such as recreation and, which, and, and services that really draw people to this town. What is our differences between Fishkill, uh, Cortland, and us? A vast difference. And that's what draws people here versus going there. What about the uh, least popular uh, of all, which in the revenue direction would be the property tax? Is it time for a revaluation? We're well overdue. We're well overdue for a revaluation. Yeah, we only have actually. All agree on that? Yes. Okay. Then that's, that's the answer. That's why <laughs> the public to have. So uh, 
<laughs> but, yeah. but say that. And speaking of, uh, there you are. Um, anybody have anything they'd like to ask? Uh, uh, anyone that anything they ask anyone uh, is open for comment by Paul. Not everybody at once. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. We have a, does anybody have a question? To ask the people. Right, there we go, Mike. Yay, good. There we go. Thank you. Okay. We've got a mic for you here because, because of the recording. It's not because we can't hear you. I was in Beacon two weeks ago, and when I got off the train there, there was about probably a couple thousand people getting off the train in Beacon. When I got on the train in Cold Spring, two people got off. How do we regain our edge that we've sort of lost the beacon, either economically or in the arts? Or do you think we've lost our edge? I guess that's my question. Well, uh, go ahead. If you, yeah, for me, if I travel up and down 9D on a Saturday or Sunday, and, and you know, like with the emergency services, we're up in the woods all the time getting people out of the trails. Um, so I think tourism is still pretty strong here. Uh, on the 9D corridor especially. And I think the Hudson Forest Trail, which uh, is currently in the works, will certainly improve the, the uh, accessibility of that area to, to tourists from New York. But Beacon certainly has come a long way to improve their, uh, their face and to get um, some more services in there. Uh, it also is a bigger community, so I think that goes a long way for them uh, improving their services. Clearly, uh, tourism is, is, a, is an issue without a doubt. Um, for us, um, clearly, you want, uh, obviously, we're closer, so you would hope that you can create attractions such that people obviously get off where we're at here. Um, taking a look also, and then, you know, being able to um, weigh the differences between providing um, abilities to stay here for longer than a day or two, or do we want to be a community of a one or two day stay over? Um, as John said, it is a larger community, and they have come a long way, but Obviously, there are things that we can do here, I think, very positively. And that's as a town, too, not just the villages. That's not Cold Spring. Uh, Cold Spring, obviously, uh, besides their businesses, also needs, I believe, uh, sur the surrounding areas to be able to support them so that when people come here, you know, they're just not going to this, the village um, stores. They're also going to surrounding areas of attractions and make sure that as the trolley, as John mentioned, the new Fjord Trail, Obviously, the trolley and other services such that because when people get off the train, they don't have cars. So, you know, and we know we're not uh, flat ground here. So uh, we have to have that ability for people to be able to get around without having to climb hills and so forth. Or else they will go to other places where it's easier, where transportation has been made, made easier for them. Transportation is a, is a big issue um, for a lot of reasons, not just for tourism, for our own people as well. Um, but I do believe that's part of the solution towards making us more attractive. Uh, I agree with both the candidates uh, and councilmen. Uh, yeah, tourism is a big deal for this area, and I think we have one of the most beautiful uh, areas in the Hudson Valley here for people to come and see. And somehow we have to work to promote that harder, whether it's through the county tourism or get these uh, you know, messages out to people in the city that travel up here and get off the train and beacon us said, uh, let's get them to get off here. Let's uh, work with the shops on Main Street. Let's work to promote them better. Um, you know, I don't know if that's a, a, a town can act as a big brother to the village and help that process uh, and working with the county to promote us better. But, uh, you know, the Fjord Trail is a great thing to bring people here. Um, but again, uh, you know, I'd hate to see people just hike or bike through and grab a Gatorade on their way through. They need to stop at the restaurants. They need to do some shopping here. Find ways to keep that, uh, promote that, and make it happen. Yeah, I'd like to just, uh, with Mike's permission, Mr. Bellman's permission, follow up for a second because I think he raised something that I feel, and I, I think many of us feel, and may, may not want to say, but there does seem to be a vibrant uh, dimension to Beacon today, in which it seems to be up and moving. Expanding has passed critical mass. Hotels are opening. There's uh, you know, restaurants and things. Cultural uh, venues are starting. And um, it, among them, in the experience in the world, these things tend to be self-reinforcing. Uh, when you begin to get a momentum moving that attracts people, word spreads, others come, and 
uh, things begin to happen. And I feel, uh, I'll come out and say it, uh, a sense of concern that uh, maybe it's because we have this unusual, kind of wonderful structure of a village uh, which has total control over much of the center of the town, which has no center, um, uh, or whatever it is, we're kind of you know, uh, aware of it, but seem kind of unable to uh, come up with ways of, of, uh, of, of, of uh, competing or coping or cooperating or somehow being part of it. And there is some danger, at least it seems to me, of being kind of uh, left behind, if that's the right word. Um, so what do you think? I, I agree with that, Gordon. I'd like to see the, uh, I don't know what's happening in the village with the waterfront uh, development down there or, or anything down there, uh, the other end of Main Street, but uh, if the village gets that project moving down there, uh, I think that would help to get more people to stop here. You know, if you see things happening and you see things developing and, and ooh, they're opening a brewery here like they did down in Peekskill there, I was down there for an event and it's a beautiful little microbrewery and there's people getting off the train just to go there and try out try the, the beers they have there it's an attraction and if you can get a few attractions here you might have more people walking up and down Main Street stopping for a bike to eat I'm pretty I'm, I'm sorry sorry I, I'm pretty confident with the tourism in the village of Cold Spring um, I, it's irreplaceable it's a one-of-a-kind um, and it is obviously the key to to our tourism in the town of Phillipstown um, we work to foster that. Uh, we, we will do whatever we can to assist the village in, in keeping their vibrant uh, Main Street and, and the surrounding areas. And I've always heard uh, Councilwoman um, Montgomery say, we need a hotel. There's no place to stay here. There is no place to stay in, in Phillipstown. You have to go to Fishkill. We have a couple bed and breakfasts, but there is no, um, no larger scale hotel. Is that something that Phillipstown needs? Is that something Phillipstown wants? And we have to see that on step by step. But um, I'm pretty confident in Phillipstown's ability to sustain itself. Beacon had spent a long time um, in not a good place, and, and they're certainly thriving, and it's wonderful to see. Um, I enjoy the brewery, too. I would go for a brewery on Main Street. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I personally, um, I, actually, I actually chose to live over in Phillipstown. Uh, I, didn't, I wasn't born here, but um, I've been in Putnam County since 1975. I went to Mayapac, uh, Carmel. Um, I've had my family uh, in Putnam Valley, and I, as I kid around, I, I was going west, young man. I moved over to Phillipstown because I really enjoyed coming to Cold Spring, the village and the surrounding area. Um, I really admire the historic character of the village. Um, there's a lot of places that have given that up, and for money, for changes, and, and people sometimes um, don't like uh, to keeping with the old character because maybe they want something a lot larger. But I think there's something very special in the village, and it's it's drawn me over uh, constantly since I uh, since I lived in Mayapak for years. And I think it's that historic charm, and I, I really would love to see us keep it. So when we take a look at uh, weighing this, I think it's very important to make sure that you know that historic character is maintained uh, and that we don't lose it because you won't be able to get it back. Others um, from the public or other elected officials or other folks? <coughs> um, anything you all want to know? Oh, good, yes. Yeah. Thanks. I'd um, just like to hear uh, what some of your thoughts are on gaining more resources from the county level in particular. Um, it seems like there is a little bit of a disparity between the other side of the county and the resources that we're able to have on our side and that may be population based, but um, it seems like we have added to the county's tax base and that we should get our fair share. If you have any thoughts. Um, as, as I said earlier, we, I believe, generate $9 million a year in sales tax to Putnam County. Um, and I don't think we get $9 million back. So it would certainly be a great idea for us to partner up with the county and even get a small portion of, of the sales tax that's generated. It would go a long way to help. Um, we do get some great service from, from the county, though. I will say that. We have a, a great sheriff's department that works very hard for us, and you saw that last week. It was evident when the, you know, there was a, a suspect in the area. Um, we also have a, a good relationship with our emergency services with, with the county. 
They provide uh, a countywide emergency operations center, uh, which we relied on heavily during Hurricane Sandy and Irene. And we had our own setup here in the town of Phillipstown. But those services go a long way, but I think there is a definite need for some more sharing of, of, of the funds on the side of the town, on the side of the county, excuse me. And I have a good relationship with um, Barbara Scuchamara, our county legislator, and I, I, I enjoy working with her, and I think that there is some uh, possibility to get some more services to the side of the county. I know there's this discussion with Butterfield about bringing the county the health nurse to, to Butterfield, uh, as well as uh, DMV on occasion, so uh, and senior services, which are, are desperately needed. We, our seniors don't get what the seniors do on the other side of the county. So I, I would like to see some more senior services. Yeah, I, I would say in addition to that, John is John is right with that. Um, but um, we do receive a lot of services from the county, um, but I do think it also warrants us to take a look at, again, like John said, we send a lot of money there. What do, what do we get back? What kind of services? Um, I do think it's very important to work more with the county as much as we can. Um, I have personally uh, attended more meetings with the um, Putnam County Chamber of Commerce meetings over in Brewster. I've met, I've also gone to the forum recently in the Mayapac, um, trying to work with people uh, in other parts of the county itself to be able to build a relationship. And then when you start to go to the meetings, um, you know, they can tell the new economic development, they see you're there then you, you know, your face, you know who, who it is, you know what they stand for, you know what they're looking to do. She came here with a lot of experience from Orange County. Um, they have a lot of ideas also for businesses in the county, which we need to be part of, such as if we have vacancies, um, we can able, we're able to work with them to be able to take a look at businesses. They may go to Karma, which is the seat for the county, and ask about business and so forth. And if we're in there and we're working with them, we, we can, in fact, uh, be able to advertise and have them and let them know what businesses we have in Phillipstown that could be an advantage for them to move here. So I think it's very important to increase our relationship with them, but also to take a look at the funding issues and, and make sure that we feel that we, we are getting our fair share. Uh, I agree. We, we have to have our fair share. It's not a matter of try to get it. We, we have to have it. It's imperative. Um, I think Barbara Scuchamara was just telling me I think Mercy College is opening a campus over in uh, Carmel on that side of the county, so why can't we have something over here that fits? Um, like Mike said, economic development, if, if they know what properties we have to work with, they can find something that fits if it comes up. So we've got to be very proactive in that process to have, uh, you know, be involved with that constantly. You know, through the past uh, four or five years that I've been involved in, in uh, you know, town, uh, running for supervisor, Working with zoning, I've made a lot of inroads with people on that side of the county. So um, I do know a lot of people and, and know the names and faces and, and uh, who to speak to if there's a question that we ask, whether it's uh, our county executive, Mary Ellen O'Dell, or Barbara, or uh, a number of people over there. So I look forward to working hard for every everybody here in Phillips Town to getting our fair share for sure. Um, let me just uh, do a try to follow up on that one too. That's based on some <clears throat> scars I picked up over many years of having to clean out my desk in public capacities and other things. Um, as we all know, the delivery of services is one of the reasons why uh, voters um, send people to office and one of the reasons why they don't send them back. Um, so if the county budget uh, has to be divided amongst uh, a group of other towns, other legislators, um, who also are in the position of needing to deliver services to the people that send them there, uh, do we realistically have much of a prayer in hell of increasing our share of county revenue? And if so, how would we actually uh, go about doing so since uh, there seem to be more uh, just in numbers, and it's a democracy, uh, in the central and west, eastern part of the county uh, than there are over here. And I've been hearing the same thing for a long time. Is there a way to break this? Yeah, I'd say uh, if I'm elected, I'll be that guy that's over there kicking the door and then finding out why. And I'll come back and report to each and every one of you why we're not getting it, who's responsible. Uh, if we're not getting our fair share, I'll find out. And I'll let you know for sure. 
I can say we are. We are not getting our fair share, obviously. Um, all, geographically, Phillipstown is the biggest town in Putnam County. Unfortunately, the smallest population base, as you said before. It is a democracy, and obviously the squeaky wheel is going to get the oil. And there's more, just more people there, more involved. Well, that's why a lot of the services are geared towards, you know, the Manpac Carmel area. That's where it goes, Brewster. Um, you know, you put the services where the people are. We've, we've joked in the emergency services when we have countywide meetings that uh, shut the gate when you go across the Taconic on 301 because it's kind of the separator between us and, and the rest of the county. And it isn't fair. Um, the geographic separation, it, and it's more than just geographic, we are um, separated from our county hub. And it is unfortunate. I, I don't know what the answer is. Uh, I'm involved with some you know, county-wide uh, groups through the Putnam Transportation Safety Board. Um, so I do go over and I see them on a regular basis. But um, I, I just think that you know, because of the lack of population here, which we're not unhappy about, that we don't get the services that we deserve, I mean, and we generate. And the, the one way to, to definitely get that shared amount is by uh, the sales tax. And that's a fair, equitable way. I mean. Portion of what we generate would be a great way to, to reward us with what we, you know, we send back. I agree with uh, both Lee and uh, John's comments, um, but I do, like I said before, too, believe that we, besides going over and making sure that we get our fair share, is also building a relationship with people in the rest of the county and you know, making sure that they understand that Phillipstown here, Phillipstown is a partner to them. We have also taken a look at uh, the transportation and so forth. 301 is a good connection between us. And obviously shared uh, services, obviously for our seniors here, instead of going to uh, Putnam Valley to be able to, to be, able to be uh, taken care of here, instead of having to go through some of the tough roads to Putnam Valley, as they'll tell you when you go and ask them. Uh, but clearly building those relationships, like I said, we, I think we have some very encouraging changes made in the county, such as Megan Taylor's being the economic development. She came in with a lot of enthusiasm. Um, I think attending those meetings when she shows up, which we did, and be able to explain, Phillipstown is here. Uh, we want to be a, an active partner with you. Um, we don't want to be seen as uh, the frontier out west. Uh, we want to be actually involved and be able to work with you. And I think through that, we'll gain us our best. We certainly make sure that we increase our capabilities of, with sales tax, but. Uh, we need to make sure that we are building those relationships there. I think that will do us the best good. Again, just one more on this <clears throat> difficult topic. Uh, in my long, sad experience, again, in other jurisdictions like the city of New York and the United States, I've rarely seen uh, resources allocated on the basis of fairness um, and appeals to fairness. Um, if the demographics are what they are, and we are in a minority. Um, it's been demonstrated, and uh, it's being demonstrated tonight, in fact, uh, that a minority uh, with very strong views about something uh, can have um, a pretty strong effect on what else is going on. Um, how prepared would you be, or should the town of Phillipstown be, to take this problem of fairness beyond um, the um, uh, territory of asking for things, because my experience in general has been in the political world when it comes to allocation of resources, and I've been mostly in the government world, not the campaign world, you pretty much get what you fight for, not what you beg for. Do um, you think it's time for us to change our approach? It is. Uh, I'm not afraid of fight, obviously. We, we, we certainly can go and, and, and get more aggressive with it. And, and I have faith in Barbara Scuchamara's ability as our legislator to go there and to, to bring some more funds here. Um, she's on the job just just over a year or two years a year one year so she would uh, I'd like to give her the ability to bring some more funds here and if it requires us the town board to go and speak it absolutely yeah clearly um, I think a, a big uh, point for us is to be able to state clearly that uh, out of the 62 counties in this state we are not it is not a majority of them are share much much fairer than ours so I think that's a major point for us to go forward with and to be able to ex uh, explain that. And obviously you want to try to work with the county, but as Gordon said, if you, if in fact you have to go beyond that, you can take a look at state officials. Um, but we certainly want to try to, to, to resolve this issue on, on our, in our county itself, but there are other avenues and you have to be ready to go there 
if you've tried, if you've exhausted all other capabilities. Um, so I think people who take on this position should realize that that could be in the future, and you better be, you know, prepared to do that. I think uh, earlier I stated that 70 percent of the county budget is made up of state mandates. So if, if again, if we can't find a way, or the county can't find a way, or each and every one of us should start asking those questions of our state, uh, why we have to have these unfunded mandates, then the county budget is is going to be as high and out of control as it is. And if, if we go ahead with trying to get some of that sales tax money back to help the local government, then they're going to have to offset that somehow if they don't get uh, mandate relief. And that could be property taxes going up. So we're going to, you know, take out of our left pocket, put it in our right pocket, or, or vice versa. But uh, the mandate relief is a big issue, I think. And it comes down from Albany. Right. Uh, over which we have uh, limited yep. sway. Um, <laughs> I think we would, in all humility, have to acknowledge. Um, so, well, there it is. I think we've framed this question um, and uh, see how creative the town can be and, and how it chooses to uh, confront, if it becomes necessary, uh, the situation as it is. Uh, my general experience, again, has been if you leave uh, people in public life between, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> if you leave people in public life, particularly elected officials, between a rock and a soft place, they will tend to uh, worry more about the hard place than the soft place. Um, unfortunately, the way it is, but it's how things get decided. Um, more questions? Yes. Yeah, as far as the uh, tax revenue goes, I just, if, um, don't we produce less sales tax revenue here than there would be in places like Mayopac and Brewster and Carmel? So if they were to re give us back what we'd actually end up with less, I think, wouldn't we? Uh, no. Um, we, we generate $9 million, and I'm sure Carmel and Mayopac generate a lot more than that, but we don't think we receive $9 million. Uh, and I know there was an approach earlier um, before I got on the board to even just get a portion of the excess of what they budget, and, and that was rejected. And we are one of few counties in the area that don't share the revenues with the towns. Mm -hmm. Also, also, if you, uh, as Lee mentioned before, is uh, you know, well, um, they'll have to look for it in other places. Sometimes governments, because they're getting the money, you know, spend it the way. They figure they have it, and therefore they're just going to spend it because they have it. If they're challenged and you're able to make a case and you get it back, they'll find a way to be able to work with, with what they have, as we've done here in this town. We have worked. We have looked at our budgets. They need to do the same, and we need to ensure that if we're entitled to more, that we, are going, we should receive more, and they'll be able to do what we've done all along, and that is take a look at areas inside of their county services to be able to cut where necessary. That's just any follow-up to you? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, um, I, no, I hear what you're saying. I'm, I don't disagree with what you're saying. I just don't, I don't see how, I mean, I've heard talk about this before, and it just seems like, uh, I mean, I've heard about this since I've been in this town, and I, I don't see any movement on it, so I'm just looking to see it, it's a great place. Well, if, if we could take the $9 million that we generate in sales tax and not give any of it to the county and provide ourselves with our own police department and our sheriff's department, I'm sure we could manage with the $9 million. Let's put it that way. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Good point. Yes. Yes. Interesting way to put it. Um, yep. Any other uh, if, uh, more questions? Yes. Aaron, then. Um, we have our own issues uh, with fairness, just even within the town, um, that there's some areas of the town that just have not always been included in everything and don't necessarily feel part, like Continental Village specifically. Um, is there anything that you guys would do to, um, to help make that more inclusive? Well, I like to take this one because uh, I'm from Continental Village. I'm probably in mine. Okay, so I, I think this one, I, um, I think that that's an excellent question because uh, going door to door, uh, as I have, uh, especially in Continental Village, which they're probably sick of looking at me now, um, 
But basically, the, that common theme has been there. And while I would hope that you look and would support me for a lot of other reasons, um, Continental Village, without a doubt, has told me in many ways that they don't feel as though they are part of the town. Um, there's, there's isolation there. The, the seniors, uh, just in a meeting, we had an Oktoberfest this weekend. I sat around the table with a number of seniors that are very frustrated because they say, oh, sure, they, they see, they're, they're, doing, they're fixing the senior center, they're doing work over in Cold Spring. Well, how do I get to it? You know, I can't, be, I can't drive anymore, or I know in a couple of years I may not be able to drive. There are young people that can't afford the cars to be able to come over. So as I said earlier, transportation is a key piece, and that's one area that I think, we, without a doubt, we need to get uh, Continental Village to feel more. Now, what I do point out, which I think is fair to the town board, is in that area, roads are a critical area, a critical thing. We've had uh, issues as far as safety issues with certain uh, dirt road. Uh, obviously, um, there's a lot of steep slopes over there, so naturally washouts occur often. That was probably the main thing that I was told going around. Um, so there are things we can do, and as I said earlier, too, as Board of Assessment, they got, they, they got the 7% Lakeland school tax, which they really were being overcharged with, and that they felt very good about that. That was a very positive thing um, to, again, bring them in to realizing they are a vital part of this town, just like North Highlands and Cold Spring and Nelsonville and Garrison, all right? It's very important. We include everyone in the town in all decisions, and that's part of the reason also. We haven't had someone in Continental Village on the board that I'm aware of in over 20 years. I think it's important for that side of the town to also be represented. Uh, Mike brings up the same points that I heard when I was campaigning uh, two years ago and now again, that they feel dislocated from us. It's almost like that uh, great divide we feel with uh, the other side of the county in here, where you know they say you guys have a rec center over there, but we don't really participate over that far. Um, we don't get uh, garbage service. We don't, we don't get a lot of other things. Not that we provide that at all, but I said we don't. But um, you know, they want to be a part of something, and they do feel dislocated. So um, we got to find ways to get them more involved in, in, in the town of Phillips County and uh, work with them better. Okay, last question before we have some closing comments, and then we're. This is just a question, um, John. You mentioned this nine million dollars a couple times. Right. I mean, that would equate to a little over $100 million of, rev of sales taxable revenue in Phillipstown. I was just wondering the source of that $9 because it sounds, it just sounds really high. I mean, I don't know if we generate $100 million of taxable sales in Phillipstown. The numbers have varied between 6 and $9 million over the past four years, and those are pretty solid numbers from good sources. Well, no, I mean, what is the source? Like, um, the state controller's the office? Is it? Office. <laughs> no, seriously, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, because no, when why I did the we, math uh, in my head, it's yeah. like a hundred million dollars, and I'm like, but why don't we do? Yeah, why don't we do this? That'd be great. When, yeah, when, when Richard comes up, which will be in five okay. minutes, why don't we? Uh, uh, since uh, that's the hot seat job, let it let him uh, uh, handle that one. Um, so, uh, with if there are no more, and we want to sort of try to stay close to the hour. Um, it's not a matter of no souls at all being saved after this moment, but uh, so we don't don't feel you have to compress things. But if you think back to your opening statement, as you give us a word of close, um, I mean the reality is, um, unfortunately, that there are two seats and three people, um, and just the way it works is you all three can't, uh, you know, be councilmen in a month or so. So uh, your closing, could you just Give us a sense of why you think um, this should be you. Um, why don't we, uh, I guess, because we started, we, let's start with you and we can go back the other way. So you have the opening and John will have the closing. How's that? That's fine. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, or if you'd rather not, whatever. I'm Doesn't open matter. to whatever. Okay. Fairness is, is a big thing. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Yep, you're up. Um, well, there's a story uh, some of us may have heard. There's tractor trailer that gets itself jammed under a little bridge and uh, it's wedged in there pretty good. Uh, everybody's there. Tow trucks, police, fire department, they can't get this truck out of there. And a car drives along with a little boy in the back and he rolls his window down and says, why don't you let 
the air out of the tires. They drop the truck those four inches and pull it right out. And you know, if, if you're not thinking of different solutions or looking at things from a different perspective, then not a lot of things can get moved forward. You know, this board is made up of five Democrats, nothing against any one of you. Um, but you know, sometimes it's an echo chamber. Sometimes it takes somebody not to be on that same party or not wanting to upset the apple cart with their supporters to come in with a different perspective, a different point of view and say something, hey, why don't we try it this way and move things forward from here. Um, I believe I can be that, vo that voice of reason and give that different perspective. And I want to work each and every day for you as a councilman if elected. And I hope I have your vote November 5th. Thank you. Um, clearly, I hope, uh, as I started in the beginning, and I hope I convey to you throughout it, I hope that you take a look at my service to the town, uh, my overall experience. Um, I hope that you'll evaluate me as a person and not locked into any particular party. I have clearly worked. Um, across lines with everyone. I have walked uh, the town so far, and I've, I've met a number of people um, from all parties, no parties. It doesn't matter. And I will speak to anyone at any time, as I have done. I think if you uh, have been involved with the planning board, um, you, I think you've seen that I've really tried very hard to keep an open mind. Um, I realize as I hand around a little sponge, um, I kid around, why do you sponge a sponge? is my way of being able to say that um, I'm able to I'll be open-minded in absorbing your ideas. And that's what I do on the planning board. I listen to everyone's comments. I give them a chance. I just sit back and listen, unless there's a question I have. And then I evaluate everything that's been said. I, it's been a valuable experience going door to door. I've learned an awful lot from people. I hope to continue to do that. I hope to do that on the town board because that's what I've done. I have a proven track record in the town. You don't have to say, well, will he do what he says? I've already done that. And I hope that you will give me a chance because I really think that I can do some very good for you. I plan on giving myself a performance rating every year. Um, if I was to be elected, I'm not going to be elected. And then in four years, take a look at what I've done each year, like I have at work, a performance rating. I plan on evaluating my performance as what I've done in those key areas that I've established and also to be able to listen to people, to be able to add to that list so that I make an overall informed decision. So I really appreciate you coming out like this, and I hope you will vote for me on November 5th. Thank you. Um, I, I, as I said in my opening statement, I think my track record uh, of service to the town, uh, Phillips Town, and its community is it, proven and speaks for itself. Um, I have been the voice of opposition uh, on the town board. and. I think party politics don't play a role once you're elected in town board. Um, I've disagreed with Richard. I've disagreed with Nancy, David, Barbara, um, and, and even Betty. I've had the nerve to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not easy to do. So. Um, not too old. Yeah. This, this job for me was kind of a natural progression from uh, my roles with the fire department, uh, the board of fire commissioners. I had a great learning experience on the board of fire commissioners. It's a municipal group very similar to the town board. You learn municipal budgeting, you learn uh, municipal law, and the referendum process. And now I've had the luxury of working with some very talented people. Um, my first week uh, on the town board, I went out and introduced myself to all the employees in the town. Um, I learned a lot from the town board, or the town clerk's office. Uh, Tina Miranda, I work very well with Tina, and all the employees in town hall, including uh, also the highway department. I have a, a good relationship with the guys there. Uh, and I'm out there in the street. You'll see me work there. Um, I spend all my time, a lot of my time. My wife says I spend too much time here in Phelps Town. But, um, so I, I have a good understanding of the people here. Um, I'm in the street every day. Uh, I make my living here. I say, coach, I volunteer. Um, so I really am honored uh, to have served the town since 2010 and would love to have the privilege of serving it for another four years. And uh, that's a great idea to do a rating of us all. That would be a wonderful process. Um, and, and I'm pretty confident that I would do well because I work very hard in this town. Thank you. Thank you. And appreciate your all coming out tonight and appreciate your support on November 5th. Thank you. Well, thank you. And as a uh, humble parishioner of the uh, secular faith of our town, uh, I'm also very grateful to the people who stepped forward to do the very hard thing I've never really been able to do since the student council that has run for office. Um, I've, uh, I've settled for sort of advising people and 
trying to put out a newsletter of the secular faith. Um, but it is another thing, I can assure you, altogether, to put yourself out there and go directly to the people and accept what the outcome of that is. Uh, and I have great admiration for uh, all who are willing to uh, do what that entails. Um, so uh, with that, let us all please uh, uh, give a round of thanks to those who are willing to do this. Thank you.